my idea worth sharing. Alzheimer's is preventable and even reversible. Is there anyone here that knows someone that's been diagnosed with dementia or died of Alzheimer's? Just look around the room, it's a lot of people. And that's one thing we have in common. Me, my family received a double dose of Alzheimer's when over a decade ago, my stepmother, Edith, died of Alzheimer's. And then two years later, Alzheimer's returned to slow walk my sister-in-law, Carol, to the grave. It was devastating to watch my stepmother slowly lose her brain functions and everything that was important to her. And sadly, she forgot my name, couldn't remember my face, and frankly, didn't seem to care. And I just found out, actually last night from my brother, that with my sister-in-law, he took her to 30 different doctors to find out what was wrong with her. And when they did, they told him, there's nothing we can do. So that's why I'm here today, to share with you how to prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. Now, imagine with me, there's a river. And as the water table lowers, the river starts to slow more, uh, flow more slowly. And as the river dries up, all the mud and sludge and silt prevents the rest of the water from getting through. And this is what I found happens with Alzheimer's. The brain starts to dry up. Now take a look at this image. This is of a normal brain. Notice its size and shape and texture. And this next image on the right, this is an Alzheimer's brain. Notice how it looks a little shrunken up, like a dried up orange or a walnut? This is what happened to my sister-in-law. And in this next slide, these darkened or reddened dots represent the amyloid plaques or neurofibrillary tangles which strangle and suffocate the brain. So when this occurs, and in this analogy, cerebral spinal fluid is like the river and the amyloid plaque is like the mud and the silt. After doing extensive research with an associate at University of Iowa, it became clear to me that there was a lack of flow of cerebral spinal fluid. And this fluid bathes uh, the brain and spinal cord, provides vital neurotransmitters, and washes waste products and toxins away from the brain. And this substance literally dries up. In fact, a person with senile dementia has 75% less flow of cerebral spinal fluid than that of a normal adult. So maybe you're asking yourself, what would cause a brain to shrink up like that? And researchers and I found that it's inflammation in the brain over years that causes this formation of these plaques and tangles and contributes to the shrinkage of the brain. So I began to think, what if there was a way to both prevent the shrinkage of the brain and prevent inflammation? Could this possibly help prevent and reverse this disease? And researchers around the world, including those at University of Rochester, suggest that if there were a way to clear this amyloid plaque from the brain, we could help, we could help possibly prevent and reverse this disease. So knowing this, we decided to try non-invasive gentle cranial sacral therapy, or CST. And we found in patients with mid to late stage dementia who had daily treatment, they began to regain their memory. Let me say that again, they began to regain their memory. They also began to recognize their caregivers, speak in complete sentences, and sit up on their own. So knowing this, this, or rather, this was a sign that if we can increase the flow of cerebral spinal fluid to near normal levels, this plaque can untangle, it could loosen its grip, the brain could heal itself and return itself to a more normal size. And CST seems to be able to do this, a technique where with gentle hand placement on the head and the body, cerebral spinal fluid is stimulated. And in this slide, imagine that you can watch the spinal cord just gently moving back and forth. And these learned techniques help release restrictions in the central nervous system and help increase the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. So I'm excited about this breakthrough because I believe that simply by using CST for prevention, as well as for those people with memory problems, we can start to change the way we think and even treat this disease. 
Now, there's one more thing I thought about. Inflammation. What causes this in the first place? And years ago, a gentleman on the board of director of the Southern California Alzheimer's Association told me, you know, Mike, there's 40% of people in an Alzheimer's unit have diabetes. And this took me on a path to start to look at the causes of inflammation more closely. And this is what I discovered. That researchers such as Ted Presenter, Mark Hyman, Dr. David Perlmutter, and Dr. William Davis were beginning to call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes. And the message is simple. The culprits to inflammation are the foods we eat and external factors such as accident, concussion, and even emotional trauma that CST can address. And the cure requires a decrease in our consumption of sugars, breads, and other carbohydrates, and an increase in our consumption of protein and leafy green vegetables. And exercise, we found, also improves metabolism and helps reduce and combat inflammation. So what's possible? Reversal means that the flow of the river can return back to near normal levels. And prevention means that the flow of the river can remain clear and undisturbed in the first place. So my formula for prevention of Alzheimer's dementia includes regular cranial sacral therapy, changes in diet, and regular exercise. By the time I finish this talk, seven more Americans will, will join the half a million that will die of Alzheimer's this year alone. 20 to 30 years from now, this number will triple if nothing is done. So I believe, along with regular changes of diet and exercise, cranial sacral therapy can help us retain our memories and continue to maintain and sustain our relationship with our loved ones and sustain and improve our quality of life. Thank you.